Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone around the world. And uh, I'm here to talk about the usage of media in ESL classrooms. So the use of authentic material that's readily available online and for free. Um, so let's start with the advantages of using media in a classroom. Um, the authentic language exposure. So as we know that television, movies, songs, uh, they provide learners with authentic language use, uh, colloquial expression, slang, and natural pronunciation in various different accents, depending on where you're choosing the media from. And uh, it helps users develop a more realistic understanding of how language works in real life situations. Uh, you have certain aspects of the media that are very formal. Uh, for example, the BBC News broadcast, which has very standard pronunciation and a formal way of speaking. Whereas if you watch a TV series, it's it's more casual and it uses more slang and uh, more phrasal verbs as my students keep throwing at me all the time because they're tough for everyone. <laughs> so it's moving on. We also have cultural awareness. Uh, so English language has been used by media of so many different countries and each country has made an imprint of their culture in this media which is what makes this language so global and so cohesive throughout the world for people to learn. It's become a language of business and it is the de facto language of media currently. So this meshing of cultures just brings everyone together in a beautiful way, which I personally love very much in a classroom with so many different students from so many different cultural backgrounds. They tend to recognize their culture while watching something and they're also impressed by learning something new that they didn't know about a culture that they're seeing for the first time. Motivation and engagement. Classroom can be a difficult place. Um, getting everyone's attention at the same time, uh, making each and every individual interested in the content you're teaching. And media has a lovely way of getting that attention from people. If you just mention to a class, today we're going to be listening to a song or we will watch a scene from a movie. Even the ones who generally are not very engaging in class tend to pay attention when they know that some aspect of media is involved. Varied learning styles. We know students have many different styles of learning. Some students are very visual learners. Some are auditory learners. And uh, the usage of media helps all these different type of learners, the way you mix and match these aspects of the said media. Vocabulary expansion. Uh, this is something that a lot of students have always spoken to me about. They want to learn more words, how to use them. What do you call this or what do you call that? It's not only something that's not dry when you just show a picture of something and say this is a keychain or this is a pineapple but if they actually see it in a scene where it's also used in the context the memory is better and this way the vocabulary is definitely expanded and retention of that word is also in a much better uh, is done in a much better fashion Task-based learning. Task-based learning is uh, time consuming sometimes, but when done, it can really get students involved in class. The more involved they are, the more language they use to communicate with each other and the more they learn. And media is fantastic for a task-based learning class. Now, as we have advantages, we also have some pitfalls that occur in the classroom when we use media. The first one being passive learning. It does, like I said before, it does uh, get a student interested to be involved in something related to media in the classroom, but it can also be a very passive way of learning where something is going on on a screen in front of you and maybe you're paying attention, maybe you're not. The way you can address this is find out the pulse of your classroom. As a group, what interests them the most? 
and choose the media accordingly. So you have an active interest in the content when it's being used in class. Limited or one-way interaction. Now, again, as this is something that is pre-recorded and pre-done, there is no feedback from the media, whether you're using the terms correctly or not. In this way, you have to know what you're presenting to the class back to front. You have to know uh, the scene that you're showing or the, the song that you're playing for them. You need to know the sounds and the words back to front so you can play the role of the second, um, the second entity in class that would help interaction between the students and what is being shown to them. A cultural bias. Uh, this is only solved by choosing your media very, very carefully. So once you have the part of your classroom, you not only know what interests them, but you also know what is permissible to show in class to students of particular backgrounds. Something might be inappropriate or offensive. So you have to curate your media in a very attentive way. Technical issues. I faced one at the beginning, and I'm sure that will not be the first one of the day. <laughs> With technology, there's always technical issues. So a run through before you actually start is the best way to solve it. Make sure that all your files are running perfectly. If you're using um, a speaker, you make sure that it's charged and running perfectly. Uh, make sure the internet connection is at a proper speed. Um, technical issues still occur, but a rehearsal, I feel, is the best way to make sure that you don't go through very high level technical problems. Distractions. So sometimes what's going on outside the window can be a bit more interesting than what you're showing to your students. So building up the material is very important, getting them interested in uh, maybe the actor who's going to be in there or the style of animation that you're going to show. Uh, even something just about the content. Uh, for example, once I showed um, a horror comedy animation short, which had won an award in my class. And just the mention of horror comedy animation just pricked up everyone's ears and they were glued to the screen and they made me play it twice because they just wanted to see it again. <laughs> And then we have limited control over the content. Uh, as we know, media uses a lot of slang. It also uses language that might be slightly inappropriate uh, for certain age groups or certain classrooms. And again, curating and paying very close attention and choosing your media very carefully is the most important thing you can do. I've always noticed Disney is the best go-to because um, it's made for a certain age group and everyone loves Disney for some uh, reason. Young people, adults, everyone in the class is always glued to the screen when you mention the word Disney. Also, um, one of the problems that people face is uh, there's a, a there's of subscriptions and uh, certain sites where you have to pay to actually use the media. But what I feel is that most of the media you can use is readily available on sites such as YouTube, which is free for the public to use. It's in the public domain. And if you actually search, YouTube can be a wonderful tool to use in the classroom, not only for yourself, but you can ask students to also search some videos they're interested in on YouTube. That increases interaction. They can show each other the videos, explain the videos to each other, or even just act out a certain song or video that they like. So I'm going to do some examples uh, for different levels of classrooms and what sort of media and uh, what sort of uh, lessons can be introduced. So in a classroom of A1 to A2 level students, videos with simple songs generally serve as uh, fantastic ways of getting students involved. Now, this particular song here, which is an example, uh, it's a, so all my images are screenshots from YouTube. They're not actually videos, uh, but it's also to show that everything is available 
for you to use for free whenever you need it. So this particular song about head, shoulders, knees and toes um, not only points out the different parts of the body that um, many of these students don't know as beginners, but it has a rhyme and a rhythm that does get students very interested. Uh, then you have silent shorts. So many of these students do not have um, a complete mastery on listening. And one way to bypass that is to show a silent film like uh, this particular film over here, Paper Man, that I once showed in a class. Um, and once it is done, describing what you liked about it, uh, describing the style that you like, the character that you like, the scene that you liked, can encourage a lot of interaction between students. Uh, sometimes one student might know a particular word to describe a scene that the other one would not. And in this way, there can be very, very good exchange of ideas. Now let's move on to an A2 plus or B1 classroom. Uh, of course, this is going to get slightly complex as we go further. Uh, one of my favorite activities is listening in vocabulary. So uh, in this particular song that I have used in my class, uh, my favorite things from The Sound of Music by Julie Andrews, she lists a lot of things that she loves. So you start a class in with a lead in that says, what are some of your favorite things? And uh, students list out many different things. And then you play the song on a loop and have pictures of all the things that she says, ready for the students in a jumbled fashion on the table. They have to arrange the pictures in a certain order, which is being sung by Julie Andrews in the song. So this also gives them an opportunity to discover the same sound, but difference in meaning. Uh, because for example, doorbells and sleigh bells, they both have bells in the end. So they see a bell and they realize that this image has to be in this particular place, but which one goes first? And by listening to a song again and again, they realize the difference in the sound and they can arrange it in a much better way. You can also do listening in grammar activities. Um, this is another thing I had done from Annie Get Your Gun, the song, Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better. This song is a treasure trove of comparative. It has longer, shorter, quicker, and many, many more comparative uh, words. So you can do a sheet where they have to fill in the blanks with the comparative that they're listening to. So this way they understand that they don't have to say more long and more short, and they can use words like shorter, quicker, and longer. Now let's move on to a B1 and a B2 classroom. Uh, it gets a little more complex here, of course. This is listening coupled with grammar and content analysis. Uh, one of the examples I have for this is the song from Fiddler on the Roof, that is, If I Were a Rich Man. The song is filled with conditional sentences and they go on in different paragraphs of all the things he would do. One of the activities is to listen to the different ways the comparative has been used in this song. And also analyzing the content of how he starts talking about simple things, about material aspects, and then moves on towards a more emotional and spiritual side. So this progression of desires is uh, something that can be analyzed by the students. And it goes on into a speaking activity where they list what they would do if they were rich. What are all the things they would like to buy or what are all the things they would like to do for the people they love. And then we have, as I had mentioned before, discussions based on content. So um, this was the horror comedy example that I had given in class. It's a animated short called Serial Taxi. And it uses different forms of trying to build up a suspense towards the story. So what I had done was I had shown this in class and then asked them to make a list of all the different ways you feel the suspense building up? What were the different things that you saw in there? So they describe it, they discuss it, 
and it helps building on vocabulary and understanding of content that is just pictures and not only words. Moving on to a high level of B2 plus and a C1 classroom. A task-based learning inspired by content. There are many, many different examples I can give for this, but one of my favorite ones is an episode from Seinfeld where Frank Costanza invents a holiday of his own called Festivus. After showing the clip of the entire holiday on YouTube, I asked the students to make their own holiday up. So we also discuss what other different aspects of a holiday. What do you celebrate? What do you do? There's food involved, there's gifts involved. They had to include all these aspects in their holiday and make a poster of this holiday. And uh, it led to a lot of interaction in class and very, very interesting and innovative uh, concepts of what they thought could be holidays. Uh, then we have focus on listening skills with complex materials. So of course, since these are B2 plus and C1 students, um, slightly more complex songs uh, like Taylor Swift, Shake It Off, are a good example where there is fast speaking, in a way rap, but it's clean in uh, with a language perspective and in a content uh, context perspective and you can use a, a fill in the blank worksheet to complete the rap you can have them write their own rap based on what uh, they have heard and of course you can ask them to discuss the context of the song as well so thank you very much Thank you.